Episode six of the Bomber Show, Flint Flon Friday night, Whitney Forum. Here we are with Michael George, fresh off the first long road trip of the year. Four games, five nights, three losses, one win. You want to talk about it? Because last time we were talking, Michael, we were talking about the delicate psyche of the junior hockey player, the athlete. And just as it ha- just as it turns out, they go out in a row, lose three in a row. Let's talk about it. It's a tough subject, I know, but uh, give us the what went wrong and what went right in Estevan finally to pull out a win on the road trip. Uh, basically, you know, we uh, didn't catch any breaks early on in the first game. Uh, a couple of key guys went down with some injuries, uh, and we just didn't play all that well, to be honest. Uh, you know, we didn't uh, do the little things that we needed to do. We didn't chip pucks and uh, forecheck very well, and uh, you don't do those little things. It's uh, going to end up in the back of your net, and uh, that's all she wrote. I think the expectation was for Bomber fans, you would go out and the, and the Yorkton game would be a tough game because both teams were riding very high at the time. So um, based on what we saw in terms of the score, uh, a 4-2 game, a competitive game, a few breaks could have gone either way? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, a bounce here or there, uh, it's 4-3 or it's 3-2 or 2-1. Uh, you know, so uh, it is what it is. It's a loss and uh, you just got to take what, uh, what happened and learn from it. I mean, that's all you can do in this game. And, you know, next time uh, we play them, we'll uh, have a different game plan and maybe go after them a different way and uh, hopefully get her done. So the next night you went to uh, Notre Dame, Bigger Ice Service. What did you learn in Notre Dame and Wilcox? Just be patient. Um, our power play, we could try to force do many things. You know, we're used to uh, Whitney Forms, probably uh, probably the smallest uh, ice service in the league or close to. So, you know, our guys are used to getting that pressure, pressure, pressure and having to move it quick. And there, you know, you can set up and take some time and, uh, you know, assess what's going on and where your options are and and uh, see what the best play is and make something happen that way. And then is Weyburn, uh, the third period in Weyburn, uh, was it six unanswered goals by the Wings in the third period? Is, is that something you'd rather forget about? Or is this too tough of a question for you being the assistant coach of the Flin Flon Junior Bombers? You're going to address this. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, no, we can talk about it. I mean... Uh, well, what happened? I don't know. <laughs> no. Uh, you know, we just quit doing the little things. We didn't chip pucks, and we were uh, instead doing stops and starts in our zone. We were doing pirouettes out there, it looked like. And, mm. you know, um, it's definitely the worst uh, comeback loss I've ever been a part of. But uh, at the same time, you know, you take what you can from it, learn. And uh, I thought our guys uh, responded well uh, the next night in Estevan, getting that overtime win, uh, coming back from a 2 nothing deficit. So... Yeah, it, it, again, I didn't obviously didn't see the game. You didn't even game. watch, eh? No, I didn't watch. Why? Well, I, watch, I look at the stats. Dreaming and I know about I'm Jamaica gonna, again, I'm hey? thinking about Jamaica again because it's, you know, it's getting close. But, uh, you know, you watch and you, and you see what the team is doing on the road because it's a, of a great interest. But, you know, obviously a comeback, a, a bit of a gritty performance. And I would think after that game and probably the speech by Mike Reagan after the uh, – Weyburn game and yourself I'm, I'm sure that the boys were motivated to to salvage something out of the road trip oh definitely you know uh, you go 0 and 3 and our focus was obviously uh, getting just getting two points after that I mean what's done is done and a new day is a new day and you got to embrace hockey uh, kind of like that you know you're going to win some you're going to lose some so um, take the positives which you can't what well, you can from a situation like that anyways and figure out what you did wrong and you know do a little bit of uh, soul searching as they say and Get, go out there and uh, have at her. So a nine and three record right now. It's the Notre Dame Hounds are coming to town tonight. What what did you uh, what can we expect from the Hounds in this rink tonight? And what can we expect from the Bombers? Well, I think uh, you know they're a, a smaller team, so we're definitely going to try and hit them. Uh, you know, try and put fifty hits up on the board or something like that, and uh, you know uh, make ourselves uh, physical and um, you know go after them that way. Get pucks in deep. Uh, They've got a couple good def- defensemen that are very mobile, so obviously take the body to them and, and uh, you know, let's we'll see how our power play works this week in our own building, I guess. Well, and as you say, you can only move forward. You can't move, you can't exactly. move backwards. Now, before we went on camera, you said there's uh, a few injuries to the team, uh, some key performers. Can you briefly go through that with us? Yeah, we've got um, Alt's got a hip flexor, so he'll be out probably for the weekend. Um, a couple guys with concussions will leave their names out of it. Uh, people can figure it out if they want. And, uh, you know, uh, on the road trip, not to make excuses, but, you know, we had four or five guys, myself included, actually get sick. And, you know, it's a tough uh, sled when you uh, 
you're on the road like that for mm. four games and five nights and I didn't want to get out of bed so I you know uh, can only imagine what they were going through playing but at the same time you know it's a good learning experience and heck you, you know maybe come playoff time you get sick you got to you know battle through it and uh, make yourself useful and do a couple little things for the team and try and get a W. Now, the way I was looking at it, it was like the, the team have gone nine nine straight, right? Yeah. Uh, eight straight with victories and then three losses in a row. And I think, wow, if that was the playoffs, they're, they're almost out of it. Yeah, exactly. You know, we're trying to uh, this year uh, break all of our um, our games. So seven in a row is a seven-game series. And, you know, we're down right now in that series, uh, three games to one. Uh, so hopefully we can w put a couple more together here and uh, get a win and win 4-3. Mm. On the personnel issue, uh, is there some new bodies we can expect in the lineup tonight that haven't been playing much or are new to the team or yeah. Yeah. coming off injury? Yeah, we just got uh, Bo Clinton. He's from uh, Swan Valley. Bo Clinton? Bo Clinton. Yeah. Uh, he's a big man. He's probably about 6'5", about 230. So, uh, you know, we were looking for some uh, grit and some toughness, and I think uh, Bo hopefully will step in and do a job for us and take care of some of our uh, smaller guys that are our goal scorers and whatnot and keep... Uh, Little Ranges and everyone else like that, honest, yeah. and uh, should be exciting. And any any uh, time for I, I understand the Hodden Days is close. Hayden Who's that? Days? I think Dozzy's probably going to go tomorrow night. Yeah. So that's good for him. You know, he's a young guy. He's another big body, six three or four, and uh, you know he's definitely going to add that toughness and grit, and the kid can play. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him in his first game. I know he's pretty excited about getting back at her. Uh, said a long uh, long summer to say the least but uh, yeah so Hayden will be in uh, hopefully tomorrow. Well stick around because you are the co-host tonight though I'm holding the microphone you can hold the mic if you want. I don't next. I don't want to. It doesn't it's it doesn't matter. Much, do I don't get paid for it's, this. It's, a lot. Hey, it's just <laughs> it's I don't a, know. And it's a lot of pressure on TV holding the the mic in front of your mouth when you're talking and then you know it's back tough. and forth. It's a tough gig I mean uh, you know someone well, someone with your intelligence and Grace probably is the only way I can describe it uh, that could, you know, manage a job and duty such as this for uh, Shaw t TV. And for free. Hey, but stick around because there's a lot more on the Bomber Show here on October 26th with the no, Notre Dame Hounds. No, it's the 26th oh, today. Yeah, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, <yeah. laughs> there's Dorian checking the clock. Hey, don't go away because we're coming back. Get it out. It's, it's hard. This is live. This well, is live. I don't care if it's live. Stick around because... Get professional. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I've said stick around about six times. Shaw Cable TV right here at the Whitney Forum tonight. Stick around. <laughs> here we are with Bo Clinton. Bo, you're, you're kind of tall. T tell us about your journey to Flim Flon. I heard you were hitchhiking, hitchhiking on number 10 and they picked you up with the bus. Any truth to that? No, no, that's not true at all. <laughs> <laughs> so where are you from and how did you wind up in Flim Flon? Well, I'm from the state of Saskatchewan. Uh, I the played uh, the state of Saskatchewan. Oh, uh, it's by uh, Hudson Bay, that okay. area. So Lumbermen. And, yeah. Yeah. And I played with the Swan Valley Stampeders, MJHL. I got traded here just recently. So, and it's my first day here, and I'm looking forward to play. Hey, excellent. And yeah. where did you uh, do your uh, your uh, minor hockey stint? Uh, I played minor hockey in Port Pine Plain. Yeah. Triple A midget there? No, no, I didn't play Triple A. I played just single A. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Johnny. Johnny, say so, hi. You're on TV. Yeah, right. You're on TV, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Only in flim flon. <laughs> so I take it tonight you're playing, you're not playing? Uh, no, I'm not dressing tonight. Hopefully tomorrow when the paperwork's all done and all that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank Wish you. you the best in flim flon. Yeah. Hey, do you have any questions for Michael George? No. no. Like, that was a terrible interview. I'm sorry about this, Bo. You know, <laughs> this is a bad first impression of flim flon. <laughs> Most of the people here are way better than this guy, so don't worry about it, okay? Well, I feel like I have to apologize too, Bo. We could do this segment over if you'd be more comfortable. Well, no, okay, we're good to go. Bo Clinton on the Bomber Show on Shaw Cable TV. <laughs> hey, we're here with Spencer Mollett, recent addition to the Flim Flon Junior Bombers. I understand you're going to be out of the lineup tonight with a hip flexor. What the heck is a hip flexor? Uh, I'm not really sure, but it just it kind of popped on me. Yeah. Uh, practice. It's a muscle, Brent. It's a muscle. It's one of the muscle yeah. groups in the hip area? I guess it's a muscle. Yeah. It hurts anyways, and uh, hopefully be back uh, tomorrow night. So, Tell us about your journey to Flin Flon, Manitoba, and playing for the Bombers. Uh, I was excited to get traded here. Um, came from Grand Prairie in uh, the AJHL, Alberta Junior Hockey League, and uh, it was a long drive, but uh, well worth it.
Uh, I've heard that the Bombers have had their eye on you for a while. You played for Melfort two years ago. Did you play for Daryl, man? I did, yeah. I played for Daryl and Melfort. He's been on this show, you know. Has he? Oh, yeah. How'd he do? He's a pretty bad interview. He wouldn't talk. He was upset, as usual. Daryl wouldn't talk. No. Nope. Wouldn't That's talk, and he was upset. That's a surprise to me. I understand uh, when you were in Melfort, you put a few points up on the board, and that's been following you around for a bit. Is offense part of your game, or is it more of a physical presence, or you want to combine both? I'd like to combine both. Uh, struggling a little bit to put the puck in the net right now, but uh, it's, it's always been a part of my game, and hopefully I can get that going soon here. And your impressions of Flim Flon, uh, and tell us who your billet parents are, please. Uh, my billet parents are Kent and Susie Reed, uh, son, son's Mitch, and uh, from what I hear, he's a good hockey player, so... Excited to come watch some of his games. Um, impressions of Flin Flon. It's a nice town. Uh, Spencer really likes the moose leg. Yeah, I like the moose leg. I don't know why. I like, really likes it. I see him grabbing it in the dressing room all the time after we win, and it, it's awkward. It's an awkward situation. That was uh, Kevin White. Hopefully we kick his ass tonight. <laughs> All right. I'm no, he didn't even get a smile out of him. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that was Kevin uh, White of the Notre Dame uh, Hounds coach. And uh, I don't know what he was doing in our room. Maybe he's yeah. looking for a trade. Yeah. No, the moose leg's the best part, that's for sure. Well, we've seen, uh, I believe we've seen uh, seven of them this year on the ice. And hopefully we're going to have two tonight because you're really going to kick some butt because you owe these guys one, right? Yeah, we do. Um, hopefully, hopefully two or three even, you know. Excellent. Thanks for being on the show. Catch you later. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Here with Mike Bolatsky. Tell us about it. Your son is captain of the Bombers, and here you are in Flint Flon, Manitoba. What's going on this weekend for the, for the parents of the Bombers? I uh, come to watch his son, and uh, it's parent weekend, so meet some new people and hopefully have some fun. So third year for your son, captain this year. Um, his, his journey in Flin Flon has been a good experience for, for him. Obviously, he still plays here. Yourself, give us some impressions of the organization, please. Oh, great. They've been uh, really good with Dylan. He's, you know, he struggled through some, like a bad injury, but, you know, they gave him a chance to play, which we, uh, I appreciate, and uh, I, uh, he's happy to be here. Um, Michael George tells me a lot of his skills come from you in terms of when you were like second generation hockey player. Do you care to comment on this? Probably some of them. I think I was uh, a little bit more rough and tumbler than he is. But Where did, where did you play? Uh, I had a little stint in North Battleford with Stan Dunn. Stan Dunn. Well, did, I know Mr. Stan Dunn. Did you play with his dad? No. Uh, I'm not sure. You're too old. Junior A. My dad's too old. Uh, yeah, I was junior A. Yeah. And where did you uh, where did you spend your NCAA career? Oh, <laughs> didn't have one of those. Uh, school wasn't an option when I was that age. Uh, I think it was at the Unwinder. Yeah. See, um, a lot of Dylan's skill set, you know, rubs off from his dad. His footwork is tremendous, just like his dad. Uh, there's maybe some YouTube videos that may be surfacing. I'm not saying if somebody wants them. There's money to be made in this industry. Um, Dylan, just contact me. I'll, I'll help you out with that. Uh, your dad, you know, he can really shake a leg. Well, this is good to, do, good to know. And, of course, some of these moves came off uh, the ice when you were playing in Battleford, no doubt. Oh, I imagine. I, <laughs> I'm sure they did. <laughs> Mike Belatsky on the Bomber Show on Shaw Cable TV, October 26th, the Flint Flon Whitney Forum. Don't go away because me and Michael George, we're going to wrap this whole thing up, get the heck out of here, start a hockey game, and do the dirty to the Notre Dame Hounds. Welcome back to the Bomber Show, Shaw Cable TV. You know, Mike, you've answered some very, very difficult questions tonight about the recent road trip, and I appreciate your candor. But... Um, as we move forward with this team, it's important for the, for the club to get better. Do you see the club improving? Or this whole thing in the road was a learning experience and we'll all go into the mix to make it a better hockey club? Yeah, you know, that's why you uh, play those long seasons. I mean, it, uh, it's not one game. It's as long as you win the last one at the end of the year, kind of as the old saying goes. Um, yeah, you know, those little experiences build up and uh, hopefully uh, you can reach back when you go through tough stretches, you know, and uh, it's early in the year right now. Everybody still loves uh, being at the rink every day, you know, come January, February, it's a little bit tougher, it's cold out, uh, 
you don't want to get in your cold car to drive to the cold rink but at the same time you know reach back and think of your previous years of uh, experience for our guys you know which we have a, a veteran staff this year and uh, go from there you bring up an interesting point because I can't imagine myself uh, while I'm sitting in Jamaica, beautiful day, these kids riding on the bus, small town Saskatchewan, 40 below out on, let's say, the kind of road trip that you just went through. Must be, it must be tough times and, and hard to keep your focus on why you're there, why you're doing this. Yeah, you know, on a day-to-day -day level, it definitely the focus comes in and out. And, you know, that's um, Mike and our job is to uh, keep these guys uh, headed in the right direction, uh, keep their attitudes on the you know, same plane, uh, never too high, never too low, um, you know, and uh, keep them focused. And, uh, you know, that uh, big goal at the end of the year to, you know, win the last game. Yeah. Um, I've been told because we, we're getting some emails, letters, and phone calls because people don't want Clarence back. They want you. Uh, I don't know what to do. Can you give me a little direction here? Because this is way better TV than when Peterson's here, i got to tell you. I don't know. Because he never contradicts me. I would just like to say thank you, I guess. And I don't really like Clarence either, to be honest, on a personal level or, or TV. I mean, he's just he's an MLA. Uh, he's all, all talk, no gusto. So. Well, I gotta, I gotta have a certain, you know, love for him because just because he's your family, he's family. You can pretend. That's no, I'm not most pretending. People think, I, I, don't they? I love that man. Anyway, thanks for tuning into this touchy feely show of the Bomber Show, is what we call a shot cable TV episode six, perhaps one of our best ever. But you stick around because it's going to be a long season. I, well, I'm in Jamaica. I'm, I'm kind of hoping you'll take over this this like, juggernaut of a ship here. Why don't you work? Like, well, I work during the day. And I'm working right now, actually. So stick around. No, he's not. Okay, okay. Flip around because we're out of here right now. But come back next week because we're going to have a new bomber show on Shaw Cable TV. Thank you, Michael George. Once again, great TV. I think you've got a real future in this after coaching, <laughs> whenever that is. Uh, the Hockey Night in Canada or something crazy like that. So we'll catch you later on The Bomber Show. We're gonna talk about it. Just whatever, eh? Okay, that's what we're, we're entertaining. You see. Should we Sounds maybe talk about how we plan for this on we, air? Uh, no, <laughs> because because we don't. <laughs>